Hi, this is Glenda. I've been making pinwheels and this um, video really is just for my own benefit so that next time I go and do it I'll remember what I learned and what worked best for me. Uh, the first thing was the thin paper is really a whole lot easier to work with but the double sided looks prettier. Um, so a little bit torn. Um, what you could do is, what I've sort of done a little bit here is, well no I haven't really, um, you could ink the back of the paper or something to make your thin paper um, have an inside. Um, but yeah, it's just that little bit harder to work with. Um, so there's my, my single sided thin paper. Um, the next thing I worked out was that two inches is as small as I want to go. It, anything less and it's just too, too fiddly. Um, I also love that you can use up little tiny pieces of your designer paper because um, with the expensive ones like this Graphic 45 I save all the little bits and um, so I was able to use some up so that was, was good. Um, you can get all sorts of different looks out of your pinwheels um, so I guess that's kind of obvious. <laughs> I'm babbling now already. You can double them up so that you've got a double pinwheel with eight spokes instead of four. Um, and I cut this one out with my silhouette uh, and it's a doubled up one again. Um, but you know by the time I set up the file I suppose now I've got it set up and ready. Um, but it's, it's very very dimensional and it's not going to post at all. So uh, here's my simple pinwheel. Obviously pinwheels have been done to death. Um, pinwheels have been around forever and ever and ever. Uh, and as I say, this is really for my benefit as much as anything. Uh, I have this little punch which just puts a little um, nick thing in the corner. And you absolutely don't need to do this, but I just found it gave a nice little rounded edge on the pinwheel and obviously if you've bought the die then you don't need to do any of this. So on the wrong side I'm going to draw two diagonal lines. Some people just eyeball this. I prefer to do the lines. The next thing, um, my normal pokey tool is too thick. Uh, it just didn't work for me. I rummaged around in my drawer and found this one. Uh, I think it was sold as a quilling tool originally. It's not, doesn't have the slit like a real quilling tool. This is in the days in Australia before you could get such a thing as a split quilling tool. You can see it's come out and I've had to tape it all up. It's a sad little tool but it really worked well for this. Um, but it's basically just a blunt needle in a stick. So fossick around for something a little bit thinner than your normal pokey tool and you won't go quite as insane. Um, put a hole in the middle and then you want to put one in each corner and I found I had to rotate it or else I kept poking the hole in the wrong corner. So you want to do it in the matching corner on each triangle. And then we're just going to cut a slit and I found I didn't need to go in anywhere near as far as I thought I did. I, I always kept going in a bit far. So that's all you need and I should have got a gra brad and I forgot. So then you take the pokey tool and you put on the first hole. Actually, if the paper's a bit thick, you can give it a bit of a bend to help it curl better, just with your fingers. So in one hole, and the next one, and the next one, and then it starts getting tricky and you hope you don't tear it. And 
the last one and then you want to come down and go into the middle. For some reason this one started tearing a little bit. None of the others did that. That's because I'm filming. So you bring it all down together, straighten it all up, then get the thicker pokey tool and go back through the hole. And depending on your brad, you really want to get this hole a lot bigger. So, you know, I, I used one fairly big brad and I had terrible trouble getting it through. This one's a medium sort of size prong. And I never said these weren't fiddly. Mr. Prong there. another brad and I'll straighten that one out in a minute. And by then everything's starting to come apart. Truly it didn't go this badly off camera. There we go. And you can just fluff it up a bit if you need to. But there's the pinwheel. So that's my instructions to me. Um, and if they happen to be useful for you, thank you for watching.